Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. And I'm going to go through a, a whole handful of stories here, maybe a little more than normal, but some of these are just real quick. Uh, one of these is from Paul Joseph Watson, as we call him PJ Dub. Um, pop star, you have to sell your soul to the devil to make it, and, and that is uh, Nicole Scherzinger. Uh, for those of you that might know that awful song right there, she's also with the Pussycat Dolls. She mentioned that the reason she feels like she hasn't gotten anywhere is because, uh, you know, she hasn't sold her soul to the devil. And I know she was using an analogy, an analogy there. But my point being is I'm actually a believer in this because that vocal style that she has is terrible. It is absolutely horrendous, as is Beyonce. So why in the world would you like one horrendous, talentless singer and not the other one? It stands to reason that the people that are in control, I think even Bob Dylan has said it, you know, that if you're, if you're not willing to be evil, then you won't get this. And Katy Perry is in the uh, same piece by a PJ Dub. And I'll say this, Katy Perry has got to have one of the worst singing voices in all of music history. She's terrible. And, you know, blowing up all over the place. While really good bands, am I in a good band? Yes, and I'm not afraid to say it. Are we better than the Pussycat Dolls? You bet your ass we are. Uh, passing time. There are a million people out there that are much better than these talentless hacks that we've been seeing. And it, it all ties into what I'd like to call MTV Gates, since you like to put gate on the end of everything. <coughs> That you won't get in, you won't get on the radio, and you won't get you won't get any of the things that are due to you based on your talent. Nothing from any of that means anything whatsoever. It all ties into whether or not you're willing to sing about gangsters and brothers and drugs, and basically sing about nothing but sex. And you know, I'm not a prude. I like the Lords of Acid for crying out loud. And for those of you that know who they are, they're a lot of sex. But there's talent in the music. They can sing, they can actually produce and write and perform music without this cattle railing that they want to try to call soul that is just noise. Um, we got Forbes here, drones to be deployed as nuclear fallout detectors. I'm going to let you read the article, but I will say this. There's been a lot of talk on drones. If you follow the Media Speaks, the uh, Saturday Hangouts, which is where you can find this show, by the way, for those of you that wonder why I don't post over the weekends, that is why, go to Google Hangout. Um, drones used for nuclear fallout detectors, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think that would have been something of a great benefit to our men and women who were on the, um, I, the name escapes me, who were on the... Uh, very large military vessel um, off the coast of Fukushima. And they are, and look up Kel Helen Caldercott's work on this, she has them speaking. And they were dosed, uh, cleaning the ship and working in the uh, fallout from the Fukushima uh, disaster right after it happened. And for those of you that listen to me, you know that this disaster is not and will not be over. There is no over to this. Well, I think using drones in this instance would be a good thing, um, particularly for us to keep the uh, government honest. I'd like to see civilians run them for this reason. Um, I don't trust them. That, that's what's wrong with this idea, and that's why I, I, I leave your comments below. That's why I say maybe, you know, you, you hear this, and of course it's a good idea. Using drones for, uh, for nuclear detection, fallout detection, is a wonderful idea. It greatly limits the uh, power that could be accomplished with a dirty bomb or something. But, you know, who, who do you trust to do this? I, I wouldn't like the government to be doing it. I don't know why the government needs to test for nuclear fallout. Does America not have physicists, or have we outsourced all of them? Um, <clears throat> Mike Adams, Natural News. It's now clear Obama intends to use drone strikes to kill American journalists and political enemies. This is what I'm saying when, you know, can you trust them? And I, I don't believe that you can, even though I like the idea of the nuke detection. <coughs> President Obama plans to use military drones in the skies over the United States to assassinate journalists, patriots, and critics of his administration. And that's the inescapable conclusion from the emerging pattern of evidence now publicly available. I keep reading for details. And I will. 
Front and center in this pattern of evidence is the 16-page memo that was just released, and there's a link to it, by Obama's lawyers in the Department of Justice. This memo puts forth a legal justification for the president to order the drone assassination of any American citizen that he names, anytime, anywhere, for any reason. This new power claimed by the president has no basis in federal law or the Constitution. It goes on. It is an invented power of absolute tyranny that puts the power, the power to decide who lives and who dies in the hands of one man. This document essentially legalizes the president acting as a serial murderer. And there are so many of you that are still listening to that and saying, oh, it can't happen here. Even though the, what I just read to you is facts that it is happening here. And that's why I say all the time, if suddenly Sam from the Correct Views commits suicide, if he drives off a cliff, if he uh, vanishes and quits posting videos, if he uh, is shot up a skull because he's a terrorist, anything like that, just know that it was BS. Because none of that's going to happen. But that's the way that they want us painted. And then once they paint someone as an enemy, uh, today it's a terrorist, who knows what it'll be 10 years from now, um, then they do whatever it is that they want to do. And if that means that they can kill you, then they can take that one step further. I mean, look how the SWAT teams have been uh, abused and militarized and uh, put forth as an attack on people's freedoms to even decide what they put into their own bodies in some instances. It's disgusting. And that's why you have to be afraid of having the government doing these uh, sort of nuclear surveillance issues is because they are already saying they want to arm and uh, arm them to kill us. And right there in black and white. This is from the Atlanta Wire. I hate this man so much. Um, North Korea, that's Kim Jong-un I was talking about as an unintelligent uninspiring, and soon to be bombed by the UN. And I am no fan of the UN. Did I make that clear? However, if they rain on this little bastard's house, I'm not going to whine too much. I'll be the first to say that. And he, he's just a rotten, sleazy, scummy person. The military command of North Korea says that if South Korea and the United States don't cancel their joint military exercises by March 11th, so that they can slaughter the South Koreans. I figured I would add that there. <coughs> they can consider the whole 60-year-old armistice agreement totally over. The newest threat comes as China and the U.S. are reportedly drawing up new sanctions that they have negotiated together with and will submit to the U.N. Security Council to punish DPRK for its nuclear weapons test last month. Let's pause. How much of a piece of human filth do you have to be for even China to find you disgusting? You have no friends, Kim Jong unintelligent. South Korea and the United States began a series of war games on March 1st, an annual exercise that serves as a reminder to the North about the united front that they face from the two allies. It is also a helpful reminder that the Korea War the Korean War was never technically ended. They typoed it. I didn't read it wrong. The DMZ that divides the peninsula enforces an armistice agreement that was signed in 1953. It was, it was designed excuse me, to create a ceasefire until a final peaceful settlement is achieved. But that never happened, and no formal peace treaty was ever agreed to. That's why the U.S. 8th Army never left, and the, the two nations are in a constant state of belligerence. No, they're in a constant state of belligerence because they are like, Kim Jong-un is like a little Hitler, a little, little swine, piece of garbage. The trouble was, Hitler was a good enough speaker in his time to be able to get people to believe his BS. Kim Jong unintelligible is not. Um, you're, you're, not only are you as disgusting as Adolf Hitler, but you are not as intelligent as Adolf Hitler. And that is even worse. And there isn't much, wor isn't much worse than Hitler. Good job. Un. All right. Um, Fox News. Health Department. Homeless can't eat deer meat. For those of you that know what the Dunce Cap of the Month Award is, the DNR who are the people that wanted to give an outrageous number of penalties to a family for rescuing and then freeing a deer, was on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award for January. 
and once you win it, and then you're in the running for the Dunce Cap of the Year Award. Um, the DNR has stopped their harassment of that family. So the DNR, congratulations, this is a good thing. The DNR is no longer eligible for Dunce Cap of the Year. Therefore, January needs to be replaced, and I am making an executive decision. It is being replaced with this. <sighs> This is, this is taking the place of the DNR, because I'm not going to harass the DNR. We won. Common sense prevailed. They dropped the charges, and the correct views has no problem with them, as it stands. Hunters across Louisiana are outraged after state health officials ordered a rescue mission to destroy $8,000 worth of deer meat, because venison is not allowed to be served in homeless shelters. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but listen to me. It was shot, it was taken to the deer processing place. It was not just shot and thrown at the front door. This was processed the way you and I would if we shot a deer and decided to, you know, take it to people that knew what they were doing so we wouldn't poison ourselves. This was healthy, healthy food is my point. The Department of Health and Hospitals ordered the staff at the Shreveport Bossier Rescue Mission to throw 1,600 pounds of donated venison in garbage bins, and then order that to douse the meat with Clorox so that other animals would not eat the meat. Deer meat is not permitted to be served in a shelter, restaurant, or any other public eating establishment in Louisiana, said a health department official in an email to Fox News. While we applaud good intentions of the hunters who donated this meat, we must protect the people who eat at the rescue mission. Protect them from what? Nutritious food? Idiot! And we cannot allow potentially serious health threat to endanger the public. There is no health threat from eating a properly made and processed deer. I don't mean like processed food like the BPA garbage. I mean the process of making deer into meat. That kind of process. This is as healthy as can be, idiots, idiots, idiots. The statement set off a firestorm among hunters and lawmakers. You think? <clears throat> They've been doing this for years. Hunters have been going out and shooting them. And I always tell my friend, the creeper, um, his name is Sam too, he always wants to go hunting. And I said, if you find somebody that will process the meat that I, that, you know, I kill, I'll do it. I'm not just going to shoot something to watch it fall over. But... You know, I would donate it. And then I came across this story and I thought, you know, there you go. And now the, we have it. The, I, I'm not going to be able to send them an award because I, it cost them money to do that. But they have officially replaced the DNR. And it is very likely now that they will win the much coveted dunce cap of the year. The last thing I want to get to, there's three articles here. And I'm going to let you guys look up a lot of this. Because I've reported on it some, but it has been a while. And these do tie together. And the articles, I'm going to say what they are first. RT.com, SEALs pulled off duty over Bin Laden raid book. <coughs> Huffington Post, <coughs> Afghanistan helicopter crash. More members than 20 Navy SEALs of six killed. And the last one will be the New York Post uh, helicopter over Afghanistan. Now listen. Basically what the gist of these stories are is that the government killed or killed off or allowed to be killed, and I'll explain that in a moment, anybody that could possibly have been there the day that our country uh, under Obama killed Osama bin Laden. It's no secret to anyone also that listens to the correct views to know that I don't believe any of this. I do not believe that Obama died, or excuse me, not Obama. I do not believe that Osama bin Laden, I don't believe I can speak, I don't believe Osama bin Laden died the way Obama said that he did, any more than I believe that a rhinoceros is going to come running across this room. Uh, no, because it's not going to happen, and that is exactly what didn't happen here. There were no rhinoceroses running through Congress, and there were no shooting of Osama bin Laden. Look, the man was on a kidney dialysis machine 10 years ago. You know, dragging it from cave to cave. The other thing is, um, my dad, who, for those of you who know, he passed on this past October. He 
used to tell the story all the time. The state paid for him to become an LPN, a nurse. And when they flew the people on the, the students on the planes, they flew the class on a separate number of planes. They didn't fly them all together. And the reason that they did that was so that the planes, if the plane, if God forbid it was to go down, it wouldn't kill out every student that the state had paid for. It was actually, you know what, it was the state spending money wisely. And if they're going to spend money, and on a state level, I certainly believe that they should be allowed to, then of course they're going to do that. That's my point. If the state's going to do that just for the safety of the nurses, don't you think the government would be taking care to not put all of these people into one helicopter at the same time? What I'm talking about is all the people that were witness to this are gone. And I'm going to read a little bit off of each of these stories. I told you where to look them up. U.S. Navy SEALs have reportedly been taken off active duty as a consequence of the leaked first-hand account, No Easy Day, about the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound in Pakistan, which resulted in his death, and the Easter Bunny said so. The entire command SEALs Team 6, which carried out the operation, was likely been told to stand down temporarily, according to former SEAL Brandon Webb. He was one of the author's special operations veterans who have posted their own e-book response, No SA Op, the un No Easy Op, and the unclassified analysis of the book detailing the killing, killing of Osama bin Laden. The report came one day after the release of No Easy Day account and examines its version of events, the motives of the author, and the consequences of him publishing the book. Says, we are already aware of several operations at SEAL Team 6 that have been pulled from regular deployment cycles in order to deal with the aftermath. Yeah, the aftermath of it being leaked that you lied. Go read that article. It's on RT. And here's another one. I'm going to end it here real quick. Afghanistan helicopter crash. More than 20 Navy SEAL members, six members killed. The U.S. officials tell the Associated Press that they believe that none of the Navy SEALs who died in a helicopter crash in Afghanistan had participated in the raid that Osama bin Laden, although they were from the same unit that carried out the bin Laden mission. Yeah, you know, people that might have been spoken to. Sources say that more than 20 Navy SEALs were among those lost in the crash in Afghanistan. The operator from SEAL Team 6 were flown by a regular Army crew. That's according to AP military sources. Another source says that the team was thought to include 22 SEALs, three Air Force air controllers, seven Army Afghan troops, a dog and his handler, and a civilian interpreter, plus a helicopter crew. Is anybody still alive that did this raid that killed the great Osama bin Laden that carried his dialysis machine from cave to cave for 13 years? Anybody? Last thing I want to get to, you guys be the judge. I hats off to Giselle for sending these. 22 Osama unit Navy SEALs killed as Taliban rocket shoots down a helicopter over Afghanistan, August 7th of 2011. So let's go back and look. Nearly two dozen members of the elite Navy SEAL unit that took out Osama bin Laden perished yesterday in a horrific helicopter strike at the hands of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Oh no, but Sam, that's the exact opposite of what you read a minute ago. The memory hole. Nobody reads a book anymore. I don't expect you to read a book. Go watch the movie 1984. Um, the Special Forces operatives were reportedly blasted by a rocket-propelled grenade as they rushed to aid other troops in a firefight at an insurgent stronghold in Wardak Providence, just west of Cabal. I smell a rat! And I see exactly why uh, Giselle said it. You mean to tell me that they're just going to flip the story around and absolutely nobody is going to care? Look into this. <clears throat> Read the articles. Let me know on my comment line what you think. I'll do a longer piece on this if I get some people telling me they're interested, and I'll go ahead and get a hold of Giselle, and we'll go ahead and make an actual piece out of this. I know if you guys leave enough comments, we can talk her into it. And if you remember what she did with the Occupy uh, piece that she did, it was really good. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Good night, my friends. God bless, and please donate to the show if you can, because if you do, all money goes to a better show. And also go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Check out my work, Kyle, Court, and D-Lake. Good night, friends. God bless.